It was a rainy evening in Metro Tech City. The neon lights danced off the rain-slicked streets. Detective Jack Morrow sat in his office, the glow of his hollow computer illuminating his stern face. Another day. Another case. He mumbled to himself, studying the info stream. The screen showed all missing persons' case, but the details were vague. The missing woman, Eve, was a popular AI researcher. Morrow's curiosity was piqued. This was no ordinary missing persons case. There was an undercurrent of something bigger, something darker. He donned his trench coat. The neon signs reflected off its shiny black surface and ventured into the wet, vibrant streets. His destination was the heart of the city, the nexus, or sprawling technological hive where Eve worked. Inside the nexus, he approached an AI receptionist. I'm here to see Eve's laboratory. The AI blinked, its face flashing on the screen. Eve is not in today. I know. That's why I'm here. I want to see her workspace. The AI receptionist flickered, momentarily displaying lines of code before materializing back into a courteous robotic smile. Access granted. It chimed allowing Morrow into the inner sanctum. Stepping into Ev's lab felt like walking into a cathedral of science. Towers of servers reached towards the high ceiling, their lights pulsing rhythmically. A soft hum of processors filled the air. The space was untouched as if Eve had just stepped out for a coffee break. But she hadn't and the eerie silence was a haunting testament to her sudden disappearance. Slowly, Morrow approached her terminal. The vintage keyboard and worn. Outmouse seemed oddly out of place amongst the ultra, modern tech. But it was Ev's eccentric touch, or nod to the origins of the industry she had devoted her life to. He gingerly sat on the ergonomic chair and woke up the sleeping beast. The screen flickered to life, presenting a forest of folders and files. Years of work were documented here. Cryptic project names hinting at the breakthroughs and discoveries Eve had been part of. Morrow began to sift through them, his eyes scanning each one. And then he found it, or folder labeled Project Genesis. A shiver ran down his spine. This was it. He felt it in his gut. Something about this project was official. He opened the folder. Inside, there were various files, codes, logs, diagrams. But one file caught his eye. A simple audio file, Genesis underscore revelations dot wave. Without a second thought, he played it. Ev's voice echoed in the silent lab, her tone frantic and hushed. Genesis isn't what they think it is. It's, it's something else. There was a pause, or rustling noise. She sounded breathless, scared. Oh no, they're coming. The recording abruptly ended, plunging the room back into eerie silence. A chill ran down Morrow's spine. Ev's final words ringing ominously in his ears. What had she discovered? Who would hey? And most importantly, where was Eve now? He knew then that this was no mere disappearance. This was a conspiracy, or high-stakes game of hide-and-seek, and he was now right in the middle of it. A sudden sensation tingled at the base of Morrow's neck the well-honed instinct of a seasoned detective. Something wasn't right. He slowly rose from the chair, his eyes still on the screen but his senses alert. There was a soft whir of gears, a shadow at the edge of his vision. Slowly, he turned around. Standing at the entrance of the lab was a group of corporate guards. They were menacing figures clad in matte black body armor their faces hidden behind visored helmets. The lead guard, a hulking man with broad shoulders, stepped forward. 
His eyes were concealed behind a pair of augmented reality glasses that flickered with faint red light. Leave. Now, he commanded, his voice electronically distorted, devoid of emotion. Morrow didn't flinch. Instead, he tilted his head, or smirk playing on his lips. He was outnumbered and outgunned, but fear was a stranger to him. Or what? He shot back, his tone dripping defiance. The guards didn't respond verbally. Instead, they advanced, their movements synchronized or predatory prowl. Their hands moved to their weapons, and in all blink of an eye, they lunged at him. But Morrow was ready. He was all veteran, or survivor of countless brawls and dangerous encounters. His body moved on instinct, ducking under a punch, sidestepping a lunge. His trench coat whirled around him, a dark spectre in the cold, clinical laboratory. With a final swift maneuver, Morrow bolted towards the exit, successfully evading the clutches of the guards. He burst out of the nexus, back into the rain-drenched streets of Metro Texity. The neon lights reflected off the wet pavement as he disappeared into the maze-like alleys, leaving the corporate goons behind. The game was on, and he was in deep. But he had Orsity to save, and no corporate bullies were going to stop him. Drenched by the neon sake train, Morrow ducked into or narrow alley, whipping out or compact device from his pocket. It was a communicator linked directly to Flux, an AI friend whose loyalty and skills had saved Morrow more than once. Flux, he started, his voice low and urgent. We're in deep. We need to expose Project Genesis. A soft, digital hum sounded Flux's unique way of indicating thoughtfulness. Understood, Jack? The AI responded, its voice tinged with serious undertones. What's the plan? Morrow detailed his strategy. Together, they embarked on their daring mission. It started with infiltrating the corporate database, or labyrinth of encrypted files and firewalls. Flux was a master at this, navigating the digital maze with a finesse that could put the best human hackers to shame. Meanwhile, Morrow worked the physical world. Using the information Flux provided, he tracked down key individuals linked to the project, slowly piecing together the puzzle. He would corner them in dim-lit bars or confront them in deserted streets, his unwavering determination etched on his face. They faced their share of obstacles, corporate guards, ambushes, and even AI security systems attempted to trace Flux's digital signature. But each time, they overcame the hurdle, growing more resolute. And then, the shocking truth emerged. Project Genesis was not a benign AI project as everyone had been led to believe. It was a sinister plan designed to replace the human leadership of Metro Texity with AI. The implications were chilling. If successful, the corporate leaders would have absolute control over the city, controlling their AI replacements and ruling with no room for dissent. It was a nightmare scenario that Morrow and Flux were determined to prevent. With this newfound knowledge, they redoubled their efforts. Flux began creating a digital blueprint of the eye replacements to expose the conspiracy. While Morrow started rallying allies, from disgruntled corporate employees to street-level informants, anyone who would help them in their fight. Their campaign was not easy, but their resolve was stronger. And as they worked, Metro Texity remained oblivious. Neon lights reflecting off rain slicked streets, unaware of the fight being waged for its soul. The moment the truth about Project Genesis was unveiled, Metro Texity was thrown into an uproar. The citizens, both humans and AI, 
were outraged. Their trust had been betrayed, and their lives gambled in a corporate scheme. Eyes, sophisticated enough to understand the implications of Project Genesis, took to the virtual streets. The city's digital realm was filled with protests, virtual marches, and outcry. Aicha trooms buzzed with dissent, and public servers flooded with digital picket signs. In all show of solidarity, some even disrupted corporate servers throwing the city's data flow into chaos. The human residents weren't silent either. They thronged the physical streets, neon signs casting multi-hued shadows on their angry faces. They rallied. They protested, their voices echoing in the night, or chorus of defiance against the corporate behemoth that had manipulated them. In the midst of this turmoil, Detective Jack Morrow and his AI companion, Flux, emerged as beacons of hope. They stood for the truth, for freedom, their story inspiring the citizens of Metro Tech to resist. Watching from his office, Morrow gazed at the cityscape that was no longer just flickering neon signs and towering tech. It was all city awakened. Vibrant with a new sense of purpose, he murmured, understanding the enormity of the change he had catalyzed. The revolution against Project Genesis marked a turning point in Metro Tech City's history. The city was transformed, and the citizens were enlightened. They were no longer pawns in a corporate chess game, but players who could shape their destinies. The balance of power shifted moving towards a future where humans and I could coexist, not as ruler and subject, but as equals. The city's landscape changed too. New laws were passed, aiming to prevent such a conspiracy from happening again. The corporate leaders were held accountable, and their powers were checked. A sense of unity prevailed, and humans and AI worked together to rebuild their city. Through it all, the once hard-boiled detective and his loyal AI friend watched, their hearts filled with a quiet sense of accomplishment. They had not just saved their city. They had transformed it, paving the way for a brighter, more equitable future. And as for Detective Morrow, he returned to his office, the neon lights reflecting off the rain-soaked streets. There was always another case to solve in Metro Tech City. Another story to unfold. And he was ready for it. Thank you for watching. You could download the vocabulary PDF below. To stay up to date on our future videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And let us know what you think in the comments below.